Hello everyone and welcome to Respectful Dave. Today I'm going to play a game and your job as a viewer is to think, well, what would I play in this position? Maybe t from time to time, pause your video, um, compare what you think with what I think, and then we can all learn. Okay, we found... We're going to play... We play C nah, let's play D4. The classic D4, Knight C3. This time we're not going to play the Dubava Thunder. We're going to play the Bishop G5 line. D3. There's now a pin. That's why. That's one of the very little advantages of, of this opening. Not a great opening, if I'm completely honest, but it, it, it it's still an opening, and it, it does prove that you should not be worried about opening theory um, at a very beginner-ish level. I'm going to castle now. C takes D4, E takes D4. And now we get this structure. It's very likely to transpose into some sort of... Um... Okay, it's a weird Carlsbad now. And what I mean with Carlsbad is this is the formation of the pieces. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this knight that I initially put on c3. This knight on c3 is misplaced. It's not rightly put on c3. So I have to go knight e2, put my pawn on c3, and reroute. Okay, so my opponent plays queen b6, asking a question to this bishop. I'm not worried about this pawn. I think I should worry about other things. And against 90 db4, which I was initially worried with, I thought 95 knight takes, and I, I can. I was thinking of taking with a pawn, which covers e4 and c4 scores, which are pretty important in, in these lines. Of course, I have queen takes d3 as well. I think I'm gonna take with a pawn. It looks a little bit weird because I'm doubling my pawns. But the advantage is that the, the c file is open now. Black can't castle yet because bishop f6 and sorry bishop takes f6 and knight d7. And yeah, it's it's it seems okay. You should never be dogmatic. This is being pragmatic. So dogmatism tells you that double pawns are always bad, right? But pragmatism is saying, well, is there any exception to the rule in this position? Which might be the case and might not be the case. Okay. Hmm. I want to improve this knight, but it's this knight is tied down to the fence of this pawn. So how do I approach this? I want to make the most of my pieces, but but it's difficult. So I'm gonna play queen d2. If castles, which I unfortunately can't prevent, like it's going to happen, then I might I might start treating this position in a different way. So now we have this position. I was trying to compensate the double pawns in a in a dynamic way, but now that I have this position and it seems like forcing moves are not such a high priority anymore, I'm going to approach this position in a more positional game. So I'm going to go for long-term plans. I'm going to start thinking, well, I'm playing against the bishop pair. What should I do against my, my opponent's bishop pair? So also I have to think about what to do with this knight. I don't want this knight always here. I'm going to play rook c1. I think the, the, the play concentrates on the queen side. There's no clear way I could develop a king side attack, so I'm going to play on the queen side. Yeah, my opponent plays this. I'm going to play b3. Actually, I'm going to start with a4. I'm going to put pawns in the, the color of this bishop. But I might, I might trade this bishop at the end. So I, I, I might end up trading that bishop. I'm going to play h4. Which looks like a weird move at, at, at the beginning because it's, it's it looks like I'm trying to attack. But the truth is that I want to give a little bit of air. I'm opening a window for this for this my, for my own king, but also maybe h5 h6 becomes an idea. I n I'm not claiming I'm going to checkmate, but I am claiming that in the future it might be a little bit annoying. So queen f4 maybe next move. B2 is a weakness that's for sure. how big of a weakness that's still uncertain it is difficult it is difficult i'm having crazy ideas of rook c5 so okay interesting so my opponent is happy to trade queens hmm i'm gonna play queen d queen e3 i'm not happy trading queens because my 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 double pawns are going to be more of a weakness in the end game rather than so in the middle game it's more likely i'm going to complicate things uh 
Um, and in the end game, it's it's less likely because I have not too many pieces. So I'm thinking what to do. So I'm gonna play knight f4. I have a threat. I have a very clear threat of playing rook takes c8, rook takes c8, and knight takes f7. Let's see if my opponent spots that. The reason why I didn't play rook c8 before is because after knight f4, I was a little bit worried about queen takes b2. Something that I'm not here because maybe I have rook b1. Okay, my opponent didn't do anything about about that. So I'm going to play this and that. And let's see. Now queen e6 is a very big threat. And I'm taking on c8. Yeah, my opponent missed this. I'm surprised they didn't take their time to, to, to evaluate the new circumstances. When you blunder like that, you usually want to stop for a second and think. <coughs> sorry. Stop for, stop for a second and think. Okay, what, what, what is this? What is happening? But that's not what happened to my opponent. Okay, so should I trade this? I'm trying to look for forcing moves. I want to bring my rook. This is a very sharp position, so activity is key. That's why I'm going to take first, actually. The bishop takes, I'm going to take on d5. Forcing move, once again. This is a fork. This is forking the knight and the queen. So the, the queen and the bishop, sorry. And after queen takes d4, I thought... I can take I can take on a5, which is a little bit of a what we call a materialistic approach because it's taking a pawn. But I think I'm gonna do it anyway in this better version. Where the rook takes a5. Now rook f5 is a very big threat. My opponent plays something like this, then rook f5, king e7 has to happen, and by by Ah, queen c5 may, may have been better. But by, by, by short term calculation, it seems like I should be on top of there. Okay, I'm going to play rook f3. No. And rook e3. And now with my, my pieces coordinated in this way, I'm very confident that, that this will end up in checkmate. I just have to concentrate. 7, king g4, um, 3, queen c7 after king g3. There's always going to be a check. Because it's it's just, there, there's a king. On, on, on. There we go. That was a good game. Um, what happened is, we developed our pieces, we got this position. It's not great for white, in fact, if I had to guess, the engine would already prefer black in this position, all because of this misplaced knight. But that goes to tell that tactics are more more important than opening theory. Um, after this, I rerouted my knight, I understood that this knight was misplaced. I played bishop d3, and even though I had a bad structure, I, I, I understood the position, I, I, I continued to play what the position was asking me. So in this, in this case, the position was telling me, if you take with the queen, then um, you, the knight is going to come to e4 and your activity is going to be not very good. So I take with the pawn, activating my pieces, that's what the position wants me to do. And then I play a4, putting my pawns in the color of this bishop, which might have been not the best, because this a4 pawn ended up being a little bit vulnerable after queen b4 in the future. But it, what happened is that after h4, somehow... I am getting some sort of kingside counterplay. Even though my pieces seem to not coordinate too well on the kingside, it seems like it en en ended up being my side of playing things, which I did not realize initially. Um, maybe I should have played rookie 1 and, or h4 right away, if I had known that. But well, I, I, I kept things in both sides, both in the queen side, both in the king side, a little bit in the center like this. And in this position after knight f4, it's getting very dynamic. So, as I said, there's a pawn on h4, maybe h5 is going to come. Um, there's some tension in the c file, but more concretely, there's no way you're going to find knight takes f7 other than being tactically aware. So, I ended up doing this, I took, and of course this is already better for white. So after knight takes f7, I think black should have played something like rook f8 maybe, and then knight e5, but it's... It's very complicated, it's unnecessary to go into that with black pieces. And after this, it's just better for white. Um, I ended up giving checks. Very important to, to not panic and give a thousand checks. 
But luckily for me, everything's a check. And queen c7, very important move. If not, then queen c1, I would be in trouble. The queen c7, very important move. Queen f4, and this is checkmate in two. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And as always, have a nice day.